Hey, what's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to be doing a very popularly requested video and review what are some of the best supplements for gaining muscle, weightlifting, and losing fat. The thing you have to know about supplements are they are exactly that, supplementary. They are not going to be substitutes for a good diet and workout regimen. You have to have a good diet and workout regimen in place before you consider any type of supplement program. So now that we got that out of the way, let's take a look at supplements. The first thing to have in a good supplement regimen is a multivitamin. You should take these from when you're a baby to when you die, so from the cradle to the grave. But again, this isn't a replacement for getting in your fruits and vegetables. Be sure to get your fruits and vegetable servings in place as to what type of vitamin you should get. I have just one of the men's. I got this off of a just a common drugstore. It doesn't matter too much what type of multivitamin you get. There are some sports branded multivitamins that should suit your goals a little bit better, but it's not too big of a difference. The next most important supplement is going to be creatine monohydrate. This is the most scientifically reviewed weightlifting supplement and it's also been found to be the most efficacious. It is a precursor to creatine phosphate which is used by the muscle cells to synthesize more ATP which is the energy unit of the cell and I think creatine is such a good supplement that later on I might do a video on just creatine monohydrate. But don't bother yourself with getting other forms of creatine like creatine crealkaline, creatine ethyl ester. Again, the most studied form of creatine is creatine monohydrate. And with this creatine monohydrate, it's going to drive more water to your cells to give your body a more fuller and your muscles a thicker appearance. But you have to drink a lot of water in tandem with creatine monohydrate, at least two gallons a day. And don't do a loading phase. Some uh, sources will say to like load up on 20 grams of creatine per day until you start feeling an effect. Don't worry about a loading phase. Just do 5 grams a day. You're not going to see benefits until about 3 weeks into a good creatine regimen, but creatine is cheap as dirt. And I'm saying this almost literally. I think a bag of dirt is, yeah, I think it's about as pricey as a tub of creatine. But Creatine, again, is one of the most scientifically reviewed supplements. I don't personally use creatine because I think it gives me a little bit more bloating. Uh, bloating can be counteracted by you know, not doing a loaded phase and getting in your proper amounts of water. But to each his or her own, if you find you have success with creatine monohydrate, it is perfectly safe and it is one of the most scientifically reviewed substances. Next, we're going to go with the basic whey protein. And you know, whey protein, there are many different forms that are branded. This is whey protein isolate, which is allegedly a more pure form of whey protein. There's whey protein isolate concentrate mix. There's hydrolyzed whey protein, which is branded as, you know, pre-digested whey protein so that it gets into your body and your blood cells a lot faster. But don't worry about any of these different types of fast digesting whey proteins. As long as you're getting whey protein, you should be fine. I recommend at least one gram per pound of body weight a day if you want to meet weightlifting goals. And I don't know the conversion off the top of my head for kilograms, I'm really sorry. Another type of protein to go with these faster digesting proteins, these faster digesting proteins are what you're supposed to take, like you know, either before, during, or after your workout. Again, it's up to you, but this is casein protein. A lot of people like to mix this with some skim milk before bed, but so you can do that if you want, or you can just eat regular food that digests slowly. Casein protein forms clots in your stomach, so digest slower, but that's casein protein for you. So those are some protein recommendations that I have. In terms of brands, I don't, I'm not really into a specific brand at the moment. I don't have a brand preference. I just go with whatever has the best deal. I think I just got this, like, on my way back from work. Yeah, I got this uh, from my on my way back from work. This was $20 at Walmart. Walmart is a common chain store in the United States. Um, I don't know if there is an overseas equivalent. Um, but you know, try to get a deal that gets you protein at less than $10 per pound. Again, I'm sorry, I don't know the conversion off the top of my head. Uh, in the United States, we do have a store called Costco and it's wholesale where you can get things in massive bulk. And I usually get about five pounds for $37. I don't know if they do have an international uh, version of Costco, but if there is, then that's awesome. So that's a protein for you. Just mix it with milk and this will help you meet your protein goals for the day. All right, so those are the most 
important supplements to form a foundation for a good supplement regimen. The rest of the supplements are strictly, well, every supplement I've talked about is optional, but the rest of the supplements I'm going to talk about are more optional than the ones I've already talked about. So this is going to be a pre-workout booster. These pre-workout boosters generally have a lot of creatine infused in them already. So if you are in the market for a pre-workout booster you and you already have your own creatine, you can get a pre-workout booster that doesn't have creatine in it. But this also has a lot of caffeine, a lot of B vitamins, things that give you a lot of energy before you work out. And you know, this will help you get you that pump you're looking for when you're working out. But it's personal preference whether you want to use it or not because you know you probably are already on creatine if you are interested in these supplements. Um, next, uh, this is G Fuel. This is like the gamer's branded version of a workout supplement. This is just really trimmed down ingredients. Like you know what's in here is extremely trimmed down versus what's in here. So this, I think this is like you know waste of money compared to this. If you're interested in G Fuel, just get a regular workout, pre-workout booster of some kind. All right, um, caffeine pills, you know, like, you know, you've, we've all seen these ads where they're like, you know, oh, you don't have to exercise, just take two of these pills a day and then all that fat will shrug itself off. Mm, these are just generally like really dense in caffeine and some other ingredients that aren't really validated to work that well. So save your money. Like, you know, just use this. If you're interested in just caffeine, um, take this as like, you know, a caffeine pill before you work out, but don't expect massive amounts of fat loss. You could actually end up looking a lot worse because this might burn away muscle at the same rate that it burns away fat. And if you watch some of my previous workout videos, you'll know that having muscle is the best foundation you can have for having weight loss because muscle is metabolically active tissue that will burn more calories the more you have. So, you know, that's my take on fat loss pill. Alright, um, mass gainers, these are expensive. These are generally like $2 or more per serving, but it's just a big infusion of carbohydrates mixed with protein. This is like, you know, 50 grams of protein per serving and like 80 grams of carbohydrate, um, 10 grams of fat or whatever. This is supposed to be a meal replacement. Again, these are supplements. These are completely supplementary to your already existing, hopefully already existing diet and workout regimen. And this, I think, no, just go with regular food. It's too expensive to maintain a good, like, you know, mass gainer regimen along with all of your other supplements. So next we have glutamine. Glutamine, completely worthless. Some sources have said that it helps you with recovery. Don't buy any of that. Completely worthless for weightlifting. Next, we have arginine. This is a precursor to uh, creatine phosphate, which was the precursor to ATP synthesis like I discussed earlier. And again, I think I'm going to make another video entirely about creatine because it's such an important weightlifting supplement. But again, uh, not really that relevant for weightlifting gains. Now, beta alanine, this is an interesting supplement. There have been some literature and studies published about the effectiveness of beta alanine in some control studies, but again, you know, it's not going to be the hugest thing in the world. It's not going to be as effective as creatine. If you try it and you find that you like it, then you can go ahead and use it. Pre-workout boosters generally do have quite a bit of beta alanine, and these are supposed to help your cells get the nice pump you're going for. It'll um, like drive more nutrients and more water into your cells. Uh, you should get a tingly feeling when you first take it. That's completely normal. But you know, the literature is mixed on this. It's a lot better than the literature on glutamine and arginine. But still, if you are into saving money, then you know, don't worry about this. All right, so I think that pretty much covers it. The biggest thing that I want you to take away from this video is you have to prioritize getting a good eating plan first. At least 100 and however many, one, grams per, one gram per pound of body weight of protein per day. You have to have that in place spread out over however many meals it takes for you to not feel hungry at all. You want your body to be in a constant calorie burning state. So that's the biggest takeaway from this video. Have a good diet and workout regimen before you consider any supplement program. After that, think about the supplements I talked about in this video. 
find a price range that you can afford. So thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment if you have any questions and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next video.